the last rain definitely had some positive effect all over the place it starts to green up and even here in what is going to be the future dog enclosure a real one with real fence and all that you can see that things are growing there are new grasses tomorrow i plan on doing a tour in the jeep Angel will drive so that I can sit most of the time and then I can show you a little bit more of what has happened but for now I only walk a little bit around the house and show you what is there so the dogs are exploring this it has been cut for mulch and of course they urinate on the trees but that doesn't seem to be a big problem. Um, what we can see is that some of the Palovnia trees have shed a portion of their leaves. They are now on the ground below the tree and that is also mulch so that is a good thing. For example here you can see a little bit of an old leaf hanging there. It didn't reach the ground but eventually it will. So they have thinned up a little bit and the remaining leaves are apparently there so that they can make root and continue to grow underneath. They seem not to grow towards the sky, so now it's more below the ground. But they are looking very good. So this is all natural, no pruning. We have just planted them and then they grew to what you see now. And in spring this will then continue. Experience tells us by the end of April things begin to start again. And you can see no, number eight is able to walk between the trees and under the canopy. So that's a very positive thing. So here you can see that there is green emerging especially in some areas that are more protected where the sheep and horses cannot get to immediately and if I go a little bit here on the platform and raise the camera I can probably show you the huge pile of manure that Sakahawea has produced so the guys cleaned out her corral a little bit to make it a little bit more hygienic and also there where the animals do get to you can see a little bit of green that is coming up the pond here and the dog enclosure does not hold water for that it had not rained enough but eventually this will fill up and like last time we will then probably also make use of this overflow here this is the other place that lies in walking distance for me and allows me for a quick retreat if I feel too weak and need to sit down. This is the experimental patch where we have the sunflower, sun hemp, um, we have some okra and Bermuda grass underneath and there are Palovnia trees in there. This changes shape every day. It is now more in the reproductive state so it's all about producing the flowers or the cobs and I see one very loaded sunflower here so this one looks quite interesting overall this is full of insects, so somewhere in there there's a lot of life. Sometimes you can fly them, as you can see them fly them around, but it's late afternoon. But this definitely is working. And I said it before, we will do this now all over the place in a sequence, including irrigation over summer because 
this is a lot of forage. So if this were now a paddock or a zone that we declare a paddock because it's full with forage, um, then we would pull a string somewhere in there as a marker until here and then we let them eat until that string. So this is a very very positive thing. And there's also something else. Um, let me climb over there in my condition. That's a, a gr greater undertaking. So give me a moment. So I made it safely to the other side. And now let me show you the special thing. This down there is a Tagasaste plant. It is the only one that I managed to keep alive, but it is well. And now the taproot can develop and go deep. In a couple of days there will be rain, so it should be good until now. It had enough moisture to start with. And after all, it is a plant that is meant to live well over summer and feeds on the taproot, which can be 10 meters deep. So let's see how this will develop. Um, just around the corner, you can see, if I zoom out, that there is a Polovnia tree, well developed, and there is another one in the other corner. There are more, and I'm pretty sure those that are somewhere in there might have survived instead of growing tall. They should have focused on the roots, but of course it might be that they have been shaded out and are dead. So we will see when all this has died off. We will not do anything, we will just let it be and then when everything has died off and fallen to the ground, we will then make an inspection, maybe by January or so. But I will continue to report. And like I said, this is pretty much as far as I can take it. So this here is a major obstacle, but I managed very well. So this time I continue filming. So, see, nothing happened. And here's something else also. So this reddish thing, that is a okra plant. Um, it will probably not produce any, any, anything that we can eat, but it is edible. And people elsewhere make dishes out of okra. But it's probably not enough time and not the right condition. We only seeded a few. So this is something for springtime. And the cops, we will observe how that goes. And when they are ripe, well, we will harvest a few. They are delicious. Even if this is corn for forage, it is the same corn, basically. So you can definitely eat that. And with all that said, and these impressions of this little jungle here. I will say bye bye and get some rest. So in a short while I will edit this video, upload it and then you have some update. And like I was saying, tomorrow Angel will drive me around. We will see the whole farm and I will shoot video and give you a much larger update. So step by step, I am not completely cured. I need to go to a yeah to a cut scan and see what's what, and then I will be out of the woods. So at the moment, this is good food and some medicine and the final solution will then come after the cut scan later this week. Takes a while, but getting there. So bye bye for now and see you in the next video.